Hello. Um, I hope you... Uh, that's very kind. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the music. Um, it came out of a little conversation over in the kitchen, actually, with the, com the conductor, Toby Pesser, who uh, brings his orchestra down for a little opera event we do at our house every year. And we, we're both talking about the Malcolm Arnold piece of music, where five vacuum cleaners make rather a nasty noise in the middle of the piece of music. And we thought, wouldn't it be nice to do a decent piece of music using Dyson sounds, not necessarily vacuum cleaner sounds, but Dyson sounds. And it turned into a rather interesting venture with a, with a competition for the composer and a young composer, you saw him on, on the film with an orange beard, a Welshman, actually. Um, he won, there were, I think, 30 entries, and he, he won, and he, he, he did his piece. And the piece is supposed to represent the journey and highs and lows of developing technology and the wonderful climax when finally, after 5,127 prototypes, you made it work. Um, and so I, I think he wrote a, a wonderful piece. And the Dyson engineers responded by inventing, and you saw two of them, I think, on the, on the, I tell you, actually within the orchestra. Um, very complex machines, those, but there were some simpler ones. But they all used Dyson components and all produced, I think there were seven machines in all, all produced beautiful sounds. And actually, one of the instruments was done by our undergraduates, because we now have a university at Dyson. Um, and they were actually in the middle of doing exams, but nevertheless, um, three of them built an instrument as well, and they're, they're only 17 and 18 years old. So it was a great, I think, collaboration between musicians, a, an orchestra of very young people, a lot of them only music students, and our engineering students, and a very young composer. So I hope you enjoyed it, but I thought I'd better explain why we were showing it at the beginning of a vacuum cleaner and uh, air purifier launch. Um, so going back, uh, oh, I better get my clicker. Um, <laughs> I used to come to America um, about 48 years ago to try and get my ball barrier going in, um, in America. And then since then, we've gone on to um, do our vacuum cleaners here, and our purifying fans, our robots, our lights, our hand dryers. You're a wonderful market for our technology. <laughs> But um, with this one, I used to have a few problems because uh, whilst I went in uh, coach class in the aeroplane, which was reasonably pressurized, the poor old ball bearer went in the hold, which is not pressurized. So when I arrived at the airport concourse and collected my ball bearer off the luggage belt, the ball was always flat, so I had to put the, um, the air had leaked out in the, in the unpressurized hold. So I used to have to put my suitcase and, and push this flat ball across the concourse and stop at the nearest filling station near JFK to pump up the ball. And the, um, <laughs> the same thing happened with the vacuum cleaner, um, because in, in Britain we have 240 volts, and here you have 110 volts. And I would arrive, and the vacuum cleaner would run very slowly. Actually, it was rather nice, because it was very quiet and you had a nice slow motion view of the dust and dirt spinning round in it. The only disadvantage was it wasn't particularly powerful. Anyway, I mentioned this shaggy dog story because um, the product I'm about to show now uh, is battery driven, and so it doesn't have the problems of going from one country to another and the problems of what you get from the socket in the wall with your electricity. So, um, 10 years ago, actually more than 10 years ago, but we, we launched it in 2010, we thought we would change the dynamic of a vacuum cleaner. So instead of being a big heavy thing with the weight down at the bottom on the floor, I mean, you think it's easier to have the weight on the floor and just push it, we decided to put the weight in your hand, which is a really counterintuitive thing to do, and actually a slightly stupid thing to do. But if you can make it light enough, and hold it in your hand. You then transform the way you vacuum. It's actually a much easier and lighter and less energy um, consuming way of vacuuming. So you suddenly can transform it from just being something that can clean carpets and floors to something that can clean the car and the cobwebs and everything, uh, what are those things, blinds, blinds and everything. So it completely transforms the vacuum cleaner and creates a new genre. But the secret is the motor. So if I now move on to motors, this is a, a conventional motor. It's the kind of motor that existed 
up until uh, we started developing electric motors. So that's a state-of-the-art brushed motor. Um, and we thought we could do something better. I mean, this has sort of existed since Faraday. And it has the problems of um, the carbon brushes, which uh, contact the commutator and excite the commutator. Uh, the, the, those emit black carbon dust. But they also wear out, so they have a limited life. And because it's a rather fragile setup, those sort of copper things you see there are individual strips of copper, and they have to be insulated one from the other, and they can quite easily fall apart. So they're not totally reliable, um, limited speed, limited life, and they emit black carbon, and they're very heavy. So what we wanted to do was something much smaller. Uh, so this is the first one we did. Uh, and it's, um, it doesn't have carbon brushes. It's excited by a chip. And this one weighed, I mean, 800 grams is almost two pounds. And this one is, uh, you know, a fifth of the weight. So it's very, very much lighter. And it can be very much lighter and smaller because it's going so fast. So this, this one went at about 104,000 RPM. I mean, no one else makes a production electric motor that goes at anything like this sort of speed. And it wasn't an easy thing to do. But the signal to excite it around is provided by a chip. In this case, it's a two-pole motor, which means it's excited twice in one revolution, or 6,000 times a second. So that was the start of our motor journey. Now, the, the motor I'm launching today is this one. Uh, and the, the, it's a tiny, tiny motor. That's the sort of central bit of it, the equivalent to the huge um, commentator in there. Um, and this, this goes faster, it's much more powerful, and it's even lighter than our earlier versions. But I'll come on to describe that in detail in a moment. But first, um, I just wanted to take you on the little, little journey we've come along. So we've gone from 800 grams, slow, heavy, 150 grams, tiny, tiny weight, eight. 85 air watts. Air watts are a measure, a sort of mixture of flow and pure suction. So it's a measure of the power a vacuum cleaner needs to suck dirt out of a carpet. Um, so we reduced it from 150 grams to 125 grams, and we've gone up to 290 motor air watts. So we're now as powerful as the most powerful upright vacuum cleaner, or cylinder for that matter, with a cord uh, tied to the household electricity supply. So you don't need to buy a vacuum cleaner with a cord and be tied to the power in the house any longer. Um, now, the, the motor development, in a way, um, is interesting to compare it with the Mini. Now, I love a Mini, and we have one of the very first ones sawn in half in our um, office at Malmesbury in England. Uh, and I think we've got one in our US office as well. And in the 60 years that the Mini has been around, the power-to-weight ratio of the, I mean, obviously, the, the, it now goes faster. It's a slightly bigger Mini. But um, the power-to-weight ratio is much the same. So the internal combustion engine hasn't reduced its weight much, and it hasn't incre increased its power output much. Well, it has, but it's a lot heavier. So um, I'm just saying, really, that in the 10 years we've been doing our motors, we've made quantum leaps in electric motor development. So I'll now describe the motor in detail. This is the turbine. Um, it, it's a quite interesting diagonal blade mixed flow turbine, so it's very good at creating pressure, which is suction or lift, as well as the high airflow you need to get dust out of carpets. Um, it's made of a very interesting material called peak, and it has to be incredibly accurate and very, very strong. Uh, and we developed turbine blades now at the Whittle Laboratory in Cambridge, which um, Rolls Royce used to develop massive turbine blades. So we're they're quite slow. They only go about 15,000 RPM at one end. They're big, though. And we're at the other end. We're tiny, and we go at 125, 130,000 RPM. So it's a very interesting collaboration. And that's mounted on a ceramic shaft. Now, we used to use steel shafts, but ceramic shafts can be smaller in diameter, which is very important when you're going fast. Um, it's twice the strength of steel and half the weight. And almost everything we do in designing our vacuum cleaners and, of course, the motors, it's to reduce weight. 
because weight is materials, which is not a good thing to use lots of materials. And also for you using it, you want a lighter, lighter product that's ever more powerful. And that's what we're trying to give you. And onto the ceramic shaft. Oh, the ceramic shaft is cured at 1,600 degrees centigrade, so it's quite a hot process. Now, in the middle there, you can see a rather dull silver thing. It's, it's anything but dull. It's a very, very powerful neodymium magnet. And we've been processing neodymium magnets in quite interesting ways. In fact, I'm not allowed to tell you how we've done that, because it's secret. But anyway, it's better <laughs> than, we've done, than we've done it previously. Um, and here's the, uh, it's a 16-pole, sorry, an 8-pole motor. So we give it 16 impulses on each rotation. And actually, uh, we give it a total of 16,000 impulses per second. And then it's controlled by a circuit board. Um, one of the interesting things about this circuit board is uh, if you're operating at these sort of speeds um, and with this sort of power in a very small device like this, the um, density of the air and the humidity of the air matter. So we measure what altitude you're at, and we also measure the density of the air. So we, we can tell whether you're in Mexico City or you're in a, a basement flat in New York. And actually, we can similarly tell whether you're on a table or the floor. The, the barometric pressure measurement is so accurate. Um, we could also tell you the weather. If we had a screen, we could actually tell you what the weather is. But no, we haven't gone quite that far yet. Uh, and there it is, um, packaged as a, as a complete motor. Um, now, the, and this is the production of it. It's totally automa automated. Um, there's about 300 robots on these lines. Um, we don't want anyone anywhere near it, any human, or any animal for that matter, anywhere near it, because we want absolute perfection and consistency motor to motor. Because when you're assembling something that goes this fast, if it's slightly out of balance, you've got a lateral force of about 40 tons. So it's really, really important. A number of the robots have vision systems, so they can actually see what they're doing. And we've now made about 40 million of these motors. We're making something like 15 to 18 million a year. And it, do, it winds each motor in about 12 seconds. You'll see it doing it in a minute. Um, so that really now, just, just to summarize, as I have several times before, but um, where, where we've gone with motors, we've gone um, smaller, faster, lighter, and ever more powerful. So we're now at almost 300 air watts compared with the 85 air watts that we started with. And it's being able to go to do 290 air watts, which means that you can now finally throw away the big old corded vacuum cleaner. And in the process, we've got about 950 patents on our electric motors. So if anyone else pretends they've got the same, I sincerely hope that they haven't, in fact, got the same. And we'll be after them. Um, so uh, when we've incorporated it in a, in a different format, we, we did the old format in 2010. Now in 2018, we're doing a different format. And I think I can lift the skirt and show you. Uh, there we are. It's, um, it's an inline machine. And you'll all be able to have a go with it in a minute. Um, but the, the inline thing is quite important because it saves on airflow. With, with the old one, we were turning the air through a few corners, which naturally creates inefficiency. But this one is just simply goes straight through. And um, the, the motor is slim um, because it really goes in the center of the vacuum cleaner. We don't want the motor to take up any space. Um, and of course, we want it to be very light and very powerful. So it goes, there it is, right in the center there. And um, around it, we've got the cyclone. So this is our outer cyclone, where you can see the dirt and larger dirt collecting. And then you go into the, which I think I've got, oh, sorry, go back one. You go into the inner cyclones, which I feel I can go back. I can see it. Yeah, it'll be on the end of this. Um, you go into the inner cyclones. Oh, got to get it going. Here we are. Uh, where the, it actually gets up to about 120 miles an hour, there's the air spinning around there, exerting about 79,000 Gs. I mean, you would pass out at about 10 G. Uh, so it's, it's really extraordinary centrifugal force being imparted to those, what are very, very small dust particles. You can, you can hardly see them. 
And then following that, we have um, two filters, a HEPA type filter at the end. So everything's going out in a sort of straight, um, clean line through the machine. And the battery development is very interesting. And of course, we're using the later, latest batteries, the latest materials. But, and by the way, we're developing um, solid state batteries and other batteries. But battery management is really interesting. Um, I think prior to us, if you used an, something with a battery in it, you got uh, poorer performance as you used it. It's called battery fade. So if you had a battery vacuum cleaner, it would start screaming at the beginning, and then it would gradually tone down. And I think a certain problem has existed with a certain iPhone recently. Um, but the, um, the, the problem is that um, as the batteries are used, the voltage goes down. It's a phenomenon of batteries. So they may start at a certain voltage, but you lose voltage. So what we did was to electronically up the amps to the, to the battery. So as the voltage dropped, we upped the amps. And so the wattage, because watts equals volts times amps, so the wattage remained the same. So all the while you use our vacuum cleaner, you have the same battery power. And of course, because we're cyclonic, you have no clogging, so you've got you know, the proper air flow through it, through it. So you've always got the proper suction and the proper battery power. But actually, this means because you're doing that, your batteries won't last as long. So we have a constant maximum performance, and you then drop off a cliff when the battery's dead. Um, but uh, so runtime, of course, becomes an issue. And runtime isn't really what you should be worried about. It's maximum suction, because you don't want to waste your time. So having a machine that maintains maximum suction, constant suction all the time you're using it, and then goes dead, is, I think, the correct way to proceed. But it, it means we can't claim a very long runtime. But to counter that, what we've done is we've got a trigger, um, this thing here. So when you're, when you're vac vacuuming, you've done that bit of dust, and you want to go over there and do that one. You let go of the trigger, of course. You move over here, and then you start the trigger up again. And we've worked out that that saves 30% of your battery power. Now, we're not allowed to claim that, so we claim a 40-minute runtime. But actually, you get a 60-minute cleaning runtime. And there's another nice effect of that trigger, which is that um, what battery doesn't like is being constantly discharged, because uh, it heats up. So if you let go of it and let it have a little rest, the battery cycle life is increased enormously. So not only are you saving battery power while you're cleaning, so you can clean at full power for longer, but also you're saving the cycle life of the battery. So it's a, a, the managing the battery is a very, very important part of what we do. And of course, the chip is providing the 16,000 impulses a second to the motor. So it's doing quite a lot of work. So we're very grateful for the chip. And we've um, changed the way we empty it. Um, you, what you actually do when you push the bin down is that you're wiping the shroud because sometimes you can get fluff and things caught on the shroud. So you're cleaning that nice polished stainless steel shroud. You're also pushing the dirt out of the bin. And as, as you do it in the bin, which I'll, I'll demonstrate in a minute, uh, you're not getting anywhere near the dust. And the, the device itself is right in the bin. So actually emptying is the easiest thing imaginable. Now, we've actually made the big binner, the, uh, the big binner for this model. But you don't have to worry too much about the size of the bin, because it's so easy to empty. Now, we've got two types of cleaner head. Um, one uh, for hard floors and one for soft floors, which we call fluffy. I'll explain why we call it such an engineering-sounding name in a minute. But um, <laughs> with our cleaner heads, we put the motor inside the brush bar, which means um, you don't have a belt and belts can fail, uh, so it's direct drive. And you don't get the belt path. Normally, there's a sort of blank bit there, which has the motor here and the belt driving the brush bar. Well, we don't have that, so we've got full width cleaning. So you clean. You, you haven't got that sort of nasty well, the strip that's left that's uncleaned that you have to go over again. The, the, we clean the whole width. And we've got um, nice, strong, stiff red nylon bristles for cleaning carpets. And then we've got 
carbon fiber bristles, and I'll explain why they're carbon fiber in a minute, but that's for hard floors. So it gets dust off hard floors, and I'll explain how it does it in a minute. But, um, so the point is, here you've got a cleaner head that can clean carpets, and is a specialist cleaning head with the carbon fiber bristles on the hard floors, getting dust off hard floors. Now, that's that general purpose head, but then more and more um, people are having hard floors uh, with um, and, and maybe the occasional rug. So I think it's more than about 60% of an American home is now a hard floor. So we need a specialist tool for dealing with hard floors. So we've got a nice, um, you must come and feel this, it's lovely, sort of velvety feel, um, so that it won't damage your hard floor. But it has another very interesting effect, which is that even very large Cheerios and Fuseli gets trapped and, and sucked in, and you can see it on the film, and you can also try it next door in a minute. But interspersed, we've got these um, carbon fiber bristles. Now, the thing about, um, I don't know if it's on the, maybe I should move this forward. Uh, Ah, yes. I mean, none of you will remember vinyl records. Well, maybe a few aficionados have got them. But um, the way you clean uh, vinyl records is with a, a strip of carbon fiber bristles looking exactly like that. Uh, the reason it works is that um, the dust sticks to the record by static. And if you wipe a cloth over it, you won't lift the, the dust out because it's actually gripping the plastic of the record by static. Carbon fiber is conductive, so it releases the static from the surface and allows the dust to come off. And that's how a little carbon fiber strip like that works on vinyl records. Now, we discovered the same thing with hard floors, that um, if someone with dusty footprints goes across the hard floor and you go over it with your vacuum cleaner, you don't pick it up. And we got heavily criticized in a Japanese consumer magazine for not picking up every single piece of dust off the hard floor. Actually, they were criticizing everybody. Anyway, I was rather stung by this. So the engineers and I started crawling across floors, trying to discover what was going on. And we worked out that it was the static that was causing the dust to stick to the hard floor. So we came up with the idea of using carbon fiber to release the dust. So no matter what dusty footprints or how dusty your floor is, this will pick it up, and it's a specialist hard floor tool. Now, um, yes, here we are. Well, this is now explains how we're making it, but I've just shown it to you. There it is, taking in the fuseli. Um, the, the thing about opening up the front there is that normally that would mean that you would lose suction. So when you, when you went over a a crack in the floorboards or a crevice, you'd have lost your suction because it's not a sealed floor tool. But actually, we do the sealing between the fluffy and the head here, so it seals itself and then allows um, full suction here on the cleaner head. That's enough of that fuseli. Now, um, we do pretty serious testing of all our products. And the reason we do this, um, and you won't do this at home, and you won't do any of this sort of treatment. But the reason we do it, it's quite an interesting reason, is that um, we, we believe in lean engineering. So we want to, um, we want to produce a, a product that uses only the amount of material it needs, and it's not over-engineered. That, of course, makes it lighter and means that we use fewer materials. So we, we go to extreme lengths here. And the, I rather like that dumping machine. That's right. Um, we, we go to extreme lengths. Now, if there's a failure on this horrible assault course, um, we correct it. It doesn't matter that it's unfair, or no one would ever do that at home, because to correct it and stop the breakage or whatever it was, actually, it's not a matter of necessarily adding a lot of material or increasing the cost. It's merely a matter of changing the design. So we change the design, it's lean engineering, and it won't break in your home, because we've done far more serious things than you'll ever do in your home. And so what I'm really saying and launching today is a, um, a vacuum cleaner of a new genre which will replace the rather shady characters in the background. Now, we're, we're going on making those, but we're not putting any more development cost into making machines that have a cord, because we believe this is the future.
and this is the way you should clean your home in the future. So it's quite a brave step for us, but we think we're doing the right thing. Um, now with that, uh, I'd like to give you a little demonstration. So, thank you very much. Hard floors, a different type of hard floor, and back onto a carpet again. There we are. Now, um, now the, point, the point about this machine is that um, I can do everything with it, including the car. So I can do the, the Venetian blinds. I've got a nice line of coffee here. I'm going to have a go at it. I'll just get the, the nice bristles to make sure there's no line there. I can take that off. And store it here. Right. Like Do the furniture. Or the car, for that matter. I haven't got a car in here. And then we've got an electric brush, a sort of mini version of one of those ones over there, for doing the upholstery and your bed. Right, yeah. And then recharge it. So what I'd say is don't worry about runtime, because you know, you'll get more than an hour's worth of cleaning, and you're doing your cleaning so efficiently, you'll have had enough of cleaning by then anyway. So, and, and please don't worry about capacity, because we made the big binner, big, the, the bin bigger, and it's so easy to empty it. So what I'm really showing you today is what I believe is the future of vacuuming, and I wanted to sort of share with you the direction in which we're traveling. And we'll go on and on. Um, putting ever more amounts of money into research and development, into batteries, into electric motors, into materials, to ever improve and make our products lighter and more efficient. That's what we enjoy doing, and that's what uh, gives us our kicks. Anyway, enough of me. I'd love you to go next door. We've got various rigs, and you can uh, try products out for yourself and see whether what I've said is true or not. Anyway, it's great seeing you again and look forward to talking to you individually. Thank you very much. <laughs>